It's time for another Mac 7 tutorial. This is tutorial number 18, Basic MIDI Effects, Part B. So, we had started exploring MIDI effects with the groovy tremolo, as heard in the uh, intro to this segment. I'll just turn it up so we can hear it again. That's our tremolo. Oops, lock the patcher and I can even turn it off. There it is. Okay, tremolo. No tremolo. <clears throat> Continuing in our quest for more effects and better programming, today we're going to make the pitch bend slider. We will do that by stealing our slider over here and option clicking on it and moving it over there. Now, down here in the corner, let's see if I can remember. Sometimes zoom doesn't work very well here. There we go, zooming around. There we go. You see that pitch bend is set at 64 on here. And that is because 64 is the standard. So um, zooming back out, well, uh, zooming back out here. There we go. Uh, not quite that far back out. Um, we, there we go, we're going to need the output of this to stay centered at 64. Um, because remember, we're always dealing with notes from 0 to 127, which in the weird math of programming is 128 steps, 0 to 127. It all makes sense. Okay, so what we're going to do is to keep things simple because we always want to go back to zero on our slider. Uh, I mean a, a zero spot. We're going to reprogram it. Oh, just trust me on this. Uh, let's get our our inspector here. We'll pull it out a little bit. We'll uh, we'll zoom a little bit over here so we can get a good look at it. Okay, there we go. Highlighted our little slide here, and we're going to come down here, and you see the range is 128. But what we are going to do is where it says output minimum. We're going to double click on that and enter negative 63. It's a hyphen if you can't find the negative. And that is going to lock our patcher and just check on that. Put zero in the middle of the slider. Okay. Now, for any of you who have had the pleasure of using a pitch bend wheel, they kind of like you drag it down with your finger. There's usually a little dent in it. And when you let it go, boom, it springs back to zero, right? That, except that I'm doing it with my mouse. And when you push it up, it goes, woo, and then it springs back to zero. Right to your regular note. That's your regular note. Okay, well, in order to do that, every time we give this thing a value, we need something to sort of give it a ramp back to zero, whether it's negative or positive. And so the object that we're going to learn about today, among the many objects we're going to learn about today, is the object called line. So let's type the letter N and type the word line, which will eventually fill in by itself. Now make sure you don't use the line, this one down here as a tilde. We don't want that one, that's for, that's for later when we want to do things with waves. We don't want any waves today. We just want the facts. So line is what we're going to use. And of course, you could just go to the help file and steal something, but you don't really need to. Because what I'm going to tell you is this. You generally give line, um, we're going to put a number under it so we can see what it's doing. Uh, type letter I, there we go. So. What line does is it makes a ramp back to some other number. And it does that um, by getting three numbers. The number it's starting with, the number it's going to, and the amount of milliseconds it takes to get there. And so our um, idea here is that we're going to make a message, type the letter M, and the first number is going to be the unknown number that's going to come out of the slider. And so we're going to call it string one. So 
what string one does is that any number coming in the top of the message substitutes for string one, or the first number coming in, I should say. And then we're going to say comma, then there's the second number, and that's going to be where line is going to. And since we've decided that it's zero, type zero. And now it's just a question of how long we want it to take to get there. And we could do something really fancy and make it like faster if the number's smaller and slower if the number's bigger, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to type 500, which is half a second, 500 milliseconds. And we're going to connect that to the top of line. And then we'll connect the bottom of this temporarily, mind you, to the top of that message. So here's the idea. When I take this and I pull it down to here, it drives the number back to zero. And if I take it up here, it drives it back to zero again. But I have a problem already, as you can see. Every time I touch this thing, it starts driving to zero without my consent. And um, so we need something to stop it from doing that. And by the way, don't connect these two or you'll, well, let's try it and see what happens. We oh, whoops, lock your patcher. And then you can have a real disaster. You can't have a real disaster unless you lock your patcher. Now move it. Oh, there we get the stack overflow. We're making this big loop here, and we have numbers driving the slider that's driving this number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's also another problem. Okay, let's get, first off, unlock your patcher. Get rid of this thing because it's nothing but trouble. And then click on that X there. Okay, we're back to normal now. Almost normal. So... I'm going to pull this down away from here a little bit. So one of the really weird things that I'm going to demonstrate now is what happens with sliders when you, when you offset them. So we put 0 in the middle by subtracting 63. So you would think, let's just type a message here for, well, you, you can do it or don't if you don't want to. I'm going to just type a 0 in the middle here. Now, anyone but a fool would think, if I click on this, our slider's going to go to the middle. Boom. But it doesn't. It goes to the bottom. And, the out and it outputs negative 63. So one of the idiosyncrasies of Max is that when you do the offset, that's only the offset on the output side. So if you want zero in this case, you have to add uh, 63 to it. Let's test. Uh, we'll unlock our patcher, type an N, and say plus 63. 67. Oh my god. Okay, plus 63. There we go. Rewiring a little bit here to that, and the zero goes in there. Now the zero is going to be plus 63. Let's see if it works. Boom. So now that we've added 63 to 0, it's going to go back there. So one of the things that was definitely going haywire before is that a 0 coming in the top would try to make this output a 63, which would then come around. You can imagine the whole thing. It's like, uh, tell it, it's like this sentence is false. You know? Well, if the sentence is false, then it must be true. Okay, let's not go into that. Here we go. So. As I mentioned a minute or two ago, one of the other things that we want is some way to know when we're done jiggling this thing around. Like, if it just had a mouse up button, so it's like, bam, I let go of it. Now do your ramp thing. And, I know you're not going to believe this, but maybe you will believe it. Type the letter N and type mouse state state of mice. There it is. Mouse state. Hello. And then under, let's put, type the letter I, we get a number, and, whoops, hey, I didn't do that. I double clicked by accident and I got an object. You mean to tell me you can just double click and get an object? 
Yes, you can. Okay, well, that, keep that in mind, people. All right. So, as I was telling you, the mouse state, this first thing keeps track of whether the mouse is up or down. Oh, it doesn't do anything. That is because mouse state is one of those annoying objects that needs to be polled, meaning you have to ask it um, to, to give you information. However, it only needs to be asked once. So when your patcher opens, in case I haven't made you install a million of these already, um, let's type in N or double click if you like. Let's try it. Let's type load bang here so that when your patcher turns on, it will make a bang, and then we'll just uh, type a B below it. You don't really need this, but then you'll be able to see it. Okay. There we go. Load bang and a button, right? Lock your patcher. Double click on load bang, and you'll notice that it will bang. Um, but more importantly, when you fire up your patcher after restarting your computer because you've crashed it, um, it'll bang this, and then guess what happens to mouse state? What? Look, look, look. I'm going to click. I clicked. It went to 1. I let go. It goes back to 0. Click. 1. 0. Oh. Oh, yippee. So that means that when I'm doing this, if I'm holding something down, it's going to be spitting out a 1. And when I let go of it, bonk, zero. You say, hey, dude, go to zero. That's what you should do right now. Um, and how could we possibly get our, um, get this to trigger this? Well, I've experimented with this a little bit and there's lots of bad ways to do it, but one good way to do it is to use the one bang object. So, but first we have to reverse the zero and the one. When we get a zero, we want a one. And when we want a one, we get a zero. It's working backwards for us right now. Um, can I explain that? In a minute I can, but right now I'm just gonna type and N and say select. You guys remember this from put it, from doing the tremolo deal. Select space zero space one. So now when when we get a zero, it's going to bang here, and we'll put a message under here that oh, it's just a it, it's a it's a bang on the zero. I don't need, uh, all I need is a bang, and usually zeros don't supply them. And now I have another object called the one bang object. One bang. What the heck does the one bang object do? I will show you. It, with a, with a bang and a bang and a bang and a bang. <laughs> there, all I'm doing is typing the letter B. So, just connect those, and you'll be able to delete them later, but it'll be a pretty good show of how this thing works. Okay, one bang object. When you have a one bang object, what you want to do is limit the number of times it tells something. We don't want to see that nasty yellow message up there anymore. So I'm going to lock my patcher here and show that, okay, when this thing goes bang, like that, right? It lets a bang out there all the time, but no bang out here unless you go bang here first and then bang here. But it'll only do it once and then it goes back to over there. Come on, go over there. So essentially what it's saying is you can get a bang to go from here to there, but only once and then you have to hit the reset button. This is really the reset button. Reset. Okay. Boom, I got a bang there. Ah, now it goes over here, forevermore, <clears throat> till I hit the reset button. Okay, a lot of complications there. So when we let go of our mouse, it's gonna go to zero, right? That is gonna come in here 
it's going to select the zero. Uh, let me unlock the patcher. So it says, bang, if input matches zero. Okay, when it matches zero, I want this thing to send out a bang, but I only want it to do it once. And I only want to like, I don't want this thing, like, every time I'm using the mouse over here to be, like, you know, running my ramps up and down on my pitch bender. That's not my, my plan. What I want is when I let go of this, it's going to do that. So, one of the cool things about line is that if you go over to this outlet, it says when it gets to the end of its ramp, it'll hit, it'll signal by sending out a bang. Ha-ha! That is going to be my reset button. So that I drag down to here and I with my cool segmented patch cord come over here and I go down here. Okay so now I've got a system where once this thing does its ramp it will reset my bang and I can do another ramp. Now the trick Whatever this number is here, I'm just going to lock my patcher so I can run it up and down here. Okay, whatever this number is here when I let go, boom, I want it to send that number up here and not any other number and not this number while it's ramping down to zero. Not that it'll do anything, but it, <clears throat> it'll be a little problem. So I'm going to make this generate a message over here, just type the letter M. And if you remember, messages, when they receive something in the right hand outlet, they get the number in there, but they don't output it. They don't do anything with it, right? So if I run this up and down now, I get that number over there, but it's not outputting it anywhere. So that's a good thing, maybe, to attach this to. It's not being output yet. It is just waiting to be banged by something. And that thing that is going to bang it is when I, whoops, I'm going to lock my patcher again. Look over here. I'll be sliding this up and down, right? And then that thing's going to go to a zero. Bang. It's going to bang. It's going to come down here and it's going to bang this thing. And that thing's going to go up there and it's going to run that to right where I want it. Let's do this piece by piece. Boink, boink, there we go. And we'll give it a go. Here we go. Uh, all the way up to 64. Boop. And I didn't see anything happen. Did it do anything? Uh, how would we know? Negative 25, should it come up here? Hmm. I wonder what was missing there. Something was missing, but now it seems to be working perfectly. I have no idea. Maybe it had just never been banged before. But it all seems to be working now. Goes back to zero, just like we like. I go up to here, it's all the way up to 54, I let go of it, whammo, from 54 down to 0. So now it just remains to hook this 0 up to this, and we know that we have to do that by adding 63 to it. And the question is, will the whole thing just blow up now? No. Did you see that? It just went right to 0. Like it meant to do it all its life. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here it is, our very clean, let's uh, lock this down, uh, let go, back down. Oh my god, it's beautiful. So, whoop, yeah, I could just do that all day. All right, so now that we want this to be 64, it's very tempting to go up and get this, um, which is already at plus 63. But we're not going to do that. We're, we're, 
we're more nervous than that, I guess would really be the right word for it. What we're going to do is take the output of this, unlock the patcher, type the new object, and say plus 64. No messing around here. Plus 64, there it is. There's that going in there, and then we're, we can just steal this chord from pitch bend, unless you want to keep one there, and go right on up there to 64. And now it appears that our piano might work. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we can all enjoy it. Wow, as though tremolo weren't enough. Wow, two of them together, it's just horrible. All right, that's pretty darn good. Sorry about that little break there. And um, so let's, um, get this cleaned up here, which we can do by unlocking our patcher, and whoops, why didn't it unlock? There we go. And I'm just going to select all of these things, so they're all selected, and then I'm going to hold the shift bar uh, key, blah, 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 key, the shift key down, and unselect this one. And then you can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to go right up to edit and say encapsulate, wham, and this is our new patcher, don't erase the P by the way, for pitch bend control, awesome, look at that, so with these fabulous things, oh, <laughs> there's something Sometimes funny happens when, oops, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I was trying to just move them together. Um, so one of the things that somehow sometimes happens when you encapsulate things is they don't work anymore. Um, and that is because they haven't, this is what would happen to your pitch bender if you didn't have a load bang in it. Well, even though we have a load bang in it, we've got to double click on this thing and <laughs> what a mess and find that load bang and double click on it as well lock your patcher double click on that thing now the mouse state's actually going and let us not forget um so we double clicked on this load bang but one of the things that also needs to be reset is the one bang down here and so um i'm going to uh, unlock the patcher again and go all the way from this load bang down here over to the reset side of one bang so that we know that it will actually pass a bang through the very first time that it needs to. Okay, perfect. Let's wrap it up and see that it does in fact work. Hey you, oh look at that. It's perfect. Well, now Wow, I wonder what that first noise was. I liked it. Um, I think that was a plus 65 problem, which makes it go to the next note, but uh, I'm not sure. In any case, it works pretty well, this super duper pitch bend control. And I would just say that uh, come back for the next tutorial and we'll start putting all this into other uh, sub patchers and pre-made units that we can use in the future. But until then, just bend those notes, patch on, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Pow! Bye-bye.